Hello guys, today we'll be covering a 2013 historical adventure drama film called The Physician. All the relevant links and information for the film will be in the description down below. Now, let's get right into the movie. In Europe's Middle Ages, healing arts developed during Roman times are almost forgotten. There are no doctors or hospitals, only traveling barbers with little knowledge. At the same time, at the other end of the world, medical science flourishes. Rob Cole is a Christian boy working in the mines of England who's the oldest child and the breadwinner of his family. He lives with his mother and two little siblings, Samuel and Anne. He earns food working in the mines, and whatever he earns, they share amongst themselves at the end of the day. Tragically, his mother suffers a great disease of side sickness called appendicitis, for which no cure has been found. Since there are no doctors or hospitals, the traveling barbers would treat people's common diseases with very limited knowledge. One day, a traveling barber stops by Rob's town. This barber surgeon is a witty person with an enchanting aura and calls himself Barber. He claims to have the ability to cure different diseases. That night, Rob's mother suffers from excruciating pain due to a side sickness disease. He could feel his mother dying when he puts his hand over her chest. Quickly, he rushes to call Barber for help, but the barber has no plan to heed his call. With constant pestering from Rob, he finally gives in and follows him to his house. By the time they reach there, a mass of people from the church has already gathered around his mother, praying for her. The father claims that there's no cure for her disease except for God's grace. Then he adds that anything other than that would be called witchcraft. At that time, Barbara could not do anything except agree with the father. Later that night, she took her last breath, making the three little children orphans. The following morning, the two younger children are taken away by the townsmen, along with the household utensils. Only Rob is left on his own, and no one is willing to take him in. Rob then goes to the barber in the hope of tagging along with him, but he ignores the boy and goes his own way. Later that night, the barber stops his wagon in the woods to spend the night. While preparing dinner, he hears a noise coming from inside his wagon. Cautiously, he grabs a wood log and shouts at whoever is inside to come out. Slowly, little Rob pokes his head outside the wagon. He then pleads with the barber to let him stay for the night. Hearing such words from a kid, Barber pities him and allows him to stay. The next morning, Barber wakes up to Rob sleeping peacefully beside him. After that day, he has taken Rob under his wings as his apprentice. With the years passing by, they have traveled to different places treating patients together. The little boy is now turned into a handsome young man. Growing up, he wondered about what it's like inside a human body. He expresses his thought that one does not know unless he looks at it, if not of a living person, at least inside a dead body. However, with a scornful glare, Barber shuts him off and warns him to never bring up that topic in the future. Sometime later, Barber suffers from a cataract which starts hindering his work. One day, a farmer comes to get his tooth pulled out. In the process, Rob holds the patient by pressing on the chest with his hands. All of a sudden, he once again feels the nearing death of that patient. Later on, he tells his master about this, but the barber dismisses Rob's comments. Later that night, a crowd of people approaches his wagon, accusing him of using black magic, which caused the death of the farmer. That night, the people burn him alive in his wagon, but fortunately, Rob rescues him before it got too late. Next, Barber insists Rob go on his own path as he's unable to function properly like before. But Rob refuses to leave him behind and instead asks him to teach him the basics of medical treatments. From that day onwards, he starts teaching Rob the procedures and even allows him to treat the patients. But with time, Barber's eyes keep getting worse, making him almost blind. One day, Barber declares Rob to be the barber himself as he feels Rob can finally replace him. That day, someone suggests that Rob take his master to a Jew as they're able to heal the blind. Rob then takes his master to a Jewish doctor to get his eyes treated. While he's receiving the treatment, Rob spends his days socializing with the Jewish community and befriends two children, Benjamin and Jesse. After a few days of treatment, Barbara's eyesight returns. On the other hand, Rob comes to know that the Jewish doctor has acquired his knowledge from a place called Ispahan, from Ibn Sina, the greatest physician of all time. The doctor then shows them the location of Ispahan on the world map. Rob expresses his desire to travel there, but to his disappointment, the doctor tells him that even before reaching Ispahan, he'll be killed in the Muslim world. Furthermore, he explains that in the land of the Muslims, they tolerate the Jews, but not Christians as they're forbidden to even enter their land. Ever since Rob heard that Ibn Sina can cure different kinds of diseases from leprosy to typhoid, he kept thinking about studying in Ispahan. He dreams to study there to become a Hakim, the healer. So he tells the barber that they should go out there, but the barber laughs at his dream. Next, Rob realizes the incompetence of the medical treatment they've been performing. 
He does not want to waste his time being incompetent and wants to broaden his knowledge and learn to treat big diseases. So the very next day, he departs on his own for Ispahan. Later, the barber finds him and tries to talk him into returning back. Like how a parent surrenders to their children's demands, Barber also gives in for the sake of Rob's dream. Next, Barber brings him to Dover and tells him to go. Henceforth, Rob starts the new journey of his life. After traveling for many months, he arrives in Egypt. Before leaving for Ispahan, he circumcised himself and now dresses up to impersonate a Jew. He calls himself Jesse Ben Benjamin. On this expedition, he's traveling with a group of Muslim people where he meets Rebecca. The group then comes across a village that has recently been attacked by the Seljuks. Seljuks are nomadic tribes who believe that they've been chosen by Allah to punish all sinners. Only a little girl survives the attack, and Rebecca takes that girl with her, and Rob helps her to take care of the girl. During the journey, they experience a terrible sandstorm in the desert. Many people are killed and others get lost. At the end of the day, only two people remain standing. But when the other person catches Rob praying for Jesus at night, he kills him and sets off all alone. After going through many harsh circumstances, he eventually makes it to Ispahan to fulfill the dream of learning from the great Ibn Sina. Rob goes to enroll in medical school. Not only is he rejected, but he's also beaten by the guard and is left on the street. Later on, the guardian finds him and takes him in and is personally treated by Ibn Sina. However, Rob fails to recognize him. Later, he's dumbfounded to find out that he's been accepted into the madrasa or college and is ecstatic to be in the class of Ibn Sina. Rob quickly befriends Mirdrin and Karim, his fellow friends from the same class. He starts studying diligently and occasionally displays his barber skills. On one occasion, Rob reunites with Rebecca and learns that she's going to marry Bar Kapara, a novel man. After a few days, he sadly attends their marriage. Later that night, after helping save a woman's life, Rob sits down to have a hearty conversation with Ibn Sina. Soon, Ibn Sina brings Rob along with them when he's summoned to the palace by the Shah. On the other hand, the Lord of Seljuks has sent his son to conduct a peace treaty. But the Shah beheaded the Seljuks representative and sent the severed head back as a refusal of the proposed treaty. To retort the humiliation, the Seljuks then send a man infected with Black Death disease to Ispahan. Upon discovering the infected man, chaos spreads over the city like wildfire. Next, Ibn Sina and Rob go to discuss the matter with the Shah. They suggest that all the citizens must evacuate the city immediately, or else the plague will kill countless citizens. Despite the warning, the Shah pays no attention to their words. Next, Ibn Sina rejects the call from the Shah to join him in his hunt, and decides to stay behind with the students to battle the epidemic. Soon enough, patients start coming in, and within no time, the Bimaristan, or hospital, is filled with infected people. Soon the soldiers have closed the gate and only nobles are allowed to leave the city. Knowing that Bar Kapara has abandoned the city, Rob goes to get Rebecca and brings her to the hospital with the help of Mirdin. He takes care of her and reads her stories at night. Meanwhile, he's desperate to find a cure for the disease. Rob then analyzes the current situation and concludes that the flea found in mice are the vectors for spreading the disease from corpses to the living. So Ibn Sina orders the corpses to be burned right away. As a result, slowly, the patients start recovering. On the other hand, as Rebecca regains her health, Karim dies after being infected. During her time in the hospital, as their relationship deepens, Rob and Rebecca engage in making love with each other. After the situation is under control, Rebecca returns back to her home. But once home, she avoids sleeping with her husband. Meanwhile, the Shah throws a celebration to Ibn Sina and his students for their heroic acts during the emergency. Next, after the hospital resumes providing its service, Ibn Sina asks Rob to look after the new patients, among which is one suffering from acute side sickness. That patient is Zoroastrian, who asks Rob to leave his body for the vultures after his death, as they believe this cleanses their souls. Like he said, after his death, Rob brings the corpse to a secluded place and cuts it open. He studies the human anatomy and locates the vermiform appendix. He even keeps records of his research in papers. Imam and his mullahs commenced revolt against the Shah in the following days. They've always been against other communities residing in their Muslim land. So this time, they join forces with Seljuks to accomplish the common goal of banishing the Shah and the Jews. Then the outcome will be the mullahs ruling over Ispahan. And in return, the Seljuks can conquer all of Persia with Ispahan their stepping stone. Soon, Rebecca finds out that she's pregnant with Rob's child. When she goes to search for him in the city, she sees him being taken away by the mullahs. The mullahs have found out about him operating in the dead body and have labeled him a necromancer. At the same time, Bar Kapara drags Rebecca with him, demanding justification from her. Now that Rebecca is found guilty of adultery, Mirdin lets Rob know that she'll be killed the next day. 
Rob is then brought to court where the mullahs portray Ibn Sina as Rob's accomplice and bring him to the court as well. They bring the dissected body as well to present as evidence. Soon after, the court sentences them to death. When the people direct their wrath on the Jewish community, Rob finally reveals that he's not a Jew but a Christian. Later, inside the confinement cell, Rob begs for his master's forgiveness. There, Ibn Sina tells him that he has been his greatest student who has contributed greatly to the medical sciences, but his recklessness will now cost him his life. During their final hours inside the prison, Rob describes the internals and his life experiences with organs to his master. Next, the Shah brings Imam into the palace and demands Ibn Sina to be freed. As he's speaking, he suddenly collapses due to side sickness. At the same time, the Shah's soldiers attack the mullahs, rescue Ibn Sina and Rob, and bring them to the palace successfully. He then orders Rob to operate on him to remove his appendicitis. Rob agrees to help him only if he ensures Rebecca's protection. After all the preparations are done, with the assistance of Ibn Sina and Mirdin, Rob performs surgery on the Shah and successfully removes his appendix. While he's sewing the wound, he sees an image of himself operating on his mother. To return the favor of saving his life, the Shah gives his word to help him get his people out. Now the war started between Isfahan and the Seljuks. The mullahs attack the city and burn the madrasa. Rob and the others have gathered people around the east gate to get out of the city, but Ibn Sina is nowhere to be seen. Rob then goes back and finds them in the madrasa. There, Ibn Sina gives them the medical records book and addresses them as Hakim Robert Cole before he breathes his last breath. Later, the Shah loses to the Seljuks, but he still dies as a brave king in the battle zone. Rob and the others manage to escape through the gate. At last, Rob makes his dream come true. He's become a great physician and now operates a hospital in the city of London where any diseases can be cured. He's living his dream life with his wife, Rebecca. Lastly, the old barber is delighted to learn about his apprentice's success from a little boy who's recently been to his hospital. Talking about Rob, the boy leads the old barber to his hospital. The movie ends.